Allen's Heating and Cooling is your licensed Amana equipment dealer. Trust Allen's Heating and Cooling to install and service your heating and cooling unit. Allen services all brands and with the purchase of a new Amana, offers a lifetime compressor warranty. Call Sean Clark or any of his friendly staff at Allen's Heating and Cooling. You're a Amana dealer. Amana lasts and lasts and lasts. Hi, we welcome you out to West Lawrence High School. We're here with Coach Kagan McLean. Coach McLean, uh, these are still troubling times that we're having. When you're trying to put together a team and and uh, the variant of COVID keeps showing up, uh, it's showing up a lot, Coach. And uh, even with staff and and you know coaches at a uh, you know different levels in with right. West Lawrence, you know uh, Emory Davis. You yes, know, definitely. Such yeah. a rough time. I mean even had a prayer vigil for him, you know, this past week. Um, you know, such a happy guy, always such yep. a positive guy. And, and uh, you know, you just hate, you hate to see anyone get, a, mm -hmm. you know, get COVID. But, you know, when people like that get it, your heart really goes out to them. But uh, right. I, I guess the one, you know, one thing you can say on that is, uh, you know, he's a believer. So, you know, you know where he's headed. But, uh, right, right. but it is tough for our community. And it is tough for you as a professional coach. Cause you want to play football? Yeah, you know it's it's a, it's one of those situations where I don't know what the what the right answer is. I mean, it's we're all dealing with with things that are bigger than athletics. You know, um, of course we want to we want to get our kids out there. We want them to play. We want them to enjoy this time of their life. We don't yeah. want them to you know have to miss out on on high school sports and, and on things that are going to make memories for them and hopefully shape them in a good way for the rest of their lives. But I mean, our community is, is obviously dealing with the COVID like every community is, uh, the COVID situation. And, um, and you know, we've got guys that are close, up, close to us coaching and, and in our families that are suffering with it. And uh, you know, our hearts go out to them and, and you know, we, we fuss about, man, we, you know, this player and that player's quarantined and we don't know who's gonna be out there. Uh, but at the same time, you gotta see the bigger picture and realize, I mean, there, there's families that are really struggling uh, people that are suffering and man me dealing with a little bit of hardship of of trying to piece together a team on a Friday night is nothing uh, compared to what some of these families are going through so I think we got to keep it in perspective perspective we got to pray uh, for these guys for our community and, uh, and we got to be there for each other in any way we can be yeah and, and coach uh, your staff has been there you coach up what you have each and every year every year is not going to be a, a you know a, a two or three deep team uh, in the playoffs, but you got to take what you have and you got to work with that. And, uh, you know, to start of the season, you, you're looking at developing a line, you're looking at a, a quarterback that hadn't started yet, you're looking at a you know, backup that had a little bit of playing time, you, you, you're looking at a, a good stable in the backfield. We, we, you really felt like, I believe, you know, on the onset. And then, mm -hmm. you know, your, your front, uh, I guess, you, you know, your front, uh, you know, eight or so are pretty pretty solid feel all right about them at least on defense right, and right. Then, you know you, you want to work through your secondary and lo and behold you you know you, you roll into the first game and it's a battle yeah yeah I mean well you 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 feel good about it when you got everybody there <laughs> when you don't have everybody there that changes some things you know right. and, and you know unfortunately because of the situation we haven't we haven't played a game yet where we've had everybody healthy everybody present everybody able to play and that's just that's what it is. That's the times we live in. I, I know a lot of other schools are dealing with that too. So it's just, uh, you know, something you have to learn to deal with. You have to adapt. You got to push through the adversity and, and hope that by the time you get to region play, everyone's there, everyone's healthy, and you can make a run at a playoff spot. Because uh, those ultimately are the games that matter. And you know, I, I tell our kids and, and anyone that <clears throat> that I talk to, I mean, we we got a tough schedule. You know, we played four teams so far, if you count the spring scrimmage, our fall scrimmage, and the first two games. And all four of those teams are undefeated right now. They're all ranked. You know, it's not like we're, we're out there playing, you know, you know guys that, that haven't won a game in five years just to try and pad some wins. We're trying to get our kids to play tough competition, you know, so that will make us better uh, for the region. But sometimes when you play tough teams and you don't play well, you lose. And that's what we're going through right now. But we've got to learn how to how to push through that. We play two ranked teams, two good teams, oh, yeah. uh, you know, two solid, solid football teams. Um, and, and we lost by a score. And, and we didn't play particularly well. And we didn't have everybody there. And, and we didn't do some things like I know we should do. Uh, so, I mean, there's some positives in that. Obviously, we want to win every game. I want to win every game. Our kids want to win every game. Um, but, but that's not always reality. 
Uh, and, and when you do lose, you got to find uh, the things that you can use out of that loss to build and, and to get better and get ready for next week. It doesn't get any easier. We play veterans next week, who's a really good yeah. football team, you know, and uh, and, and they're going to be tough. And they're they're a bigger school than we are, and they've got a lot of good players. And then you know they're they're going to be a tough matchup for us. But again, that's going to be an opportunity for us uh, to get better, to clean up mistakes, to improve as we start region the week after that. And our region's not an easy region. And you know there have been some times where I've seen teams that. That uh, you know, in regions I've been in in the past, uh, you know, they'll go into region play four and zero, five and zero, whatever, uh, and then they don't win a region game because the games they played early didn't prepare them. Yeah. And we want to be prepared for region. I know it's tough. I know it's hard to lose. I know people don't like to see us lose, and that's a good thing because when I first got here, people didn't really care sure. if West Lawrence lost or not. Yeah. So we've obviously changed some things where people are expecting us to win, uh -huh. and then I think that's a good thing. But we're going to push through it. We're going to fight through it, and and, and hopefully every week we're going to get better. And if not, we're going to make changes we got to to try and get better. Yeah, well, Coach, I mean, we've seen that in the past. And you, you talk about uh, character. You talk about, you know, the picture larger than life and, and what we're dealing with. And, and you know, on a football field uh, or, or in anything in life, uh, in any sport at, at this level for young, young men, uh, when you lose, uh, that shows what character you have as to how you approach going on down the road. Do you hang your head? Do you? you know, just give up? Do you nag yourself out? Or do you look at what you did wrong and move forward? Yeah, I mean, you got you got to look at the mistakes and you got to clean the mistakes up. And you got to understand that, that losing is an opportunity to learn, you know, because you lost for a reason. Right. And well, let's find out what that reason is and let's fix it and let's move on. And I know people have their own reasons. Well, you know, so-and-so didn't play well or these people were out or those coaches are idiots, whatever. You know, everybody's got their own opinion about that stuff. Yeah. But ultimately, we're gonna we're gonna uh, you know look at the mistakes we made. We're gonna fix them, and we're gonna move on and try and get better. And and I think that's what everybody does. And and you know how you handle adversity really speaks a lot to your character. You know, some kids are gonna come out there and they're gonna push through it. And say, hey, let's go, let's get better, let's fight. Those are the kind of kids we want to develop. And you have some that say, hey, it's about me. I'm not getting enough. Uh, you know, carries or touches or catches or playing time or whatever. So, you know, I'm just going to quit, you know, and that's just stuff you deal with. Uh, hopefully we teach our guys that, hey, that quitting's never a good thing. You know, giving up is never a good thing. Uh, push through the hard times because hard times don't last forever. You know, you and I have lived a long time. We're both old guys, yeah. and we realize we've went through hard times in our life. But ultimately, those hard times always come to an end, and things get better. And if you can teach kids to push through and handle that adversity, I, you know, I think that is a great lesson to learn in life. It is. It is, man. And uh, when, when you see those people who want to pick up a rock and throw it, you know, you got to wonder, you know. Uh, but, but in going forward, it, it takes the support of the community each and every week, each and every day. It, it takes that with our young people to continue to encourage them, ladies and gentlemen, win, lose, or draw. Uh, you know, you got to show them that support. you got to help them build that character. They're young, impressionable men. And Coach, we appreciate what y'all do. We're going to take a short break. We're going to come back and talk about that Dodge and what we learned on that Dodge County game. Stay with us. The City of Dublin Natural Gas provides the most cost-efficient source of energy available today. So for your home, choose the most natural resource. Safe, clean, efficient. All new subdivisions around the Dublin area have natural gas available. Start reducing your energy bills today with Dublin City Natural Gas Department. Natural gas, the smart choice. Call 277-5048 today and let us help you start saving today. Hey, I'm Tom Dominey with Dublin Wynn Nelson, and we're a full service wholesaler specializing in plumbing, irrigation, and industrial products. We are committed to building long-term relationships with our customers by earning your business every day. With a staff that collectively offers more than 50 years of expertise, our team knows your industry and is able to answer your questions and is ready to help you get the parts and equipment you need. At Dublin Wynn Nelson, our goal is the long-term success of your business. We achieve that goal with a simple commitment, doing things right, one customer at a time. So come by and see us at Dublin Wynn Nelson, 507 Airport Road, or give us a call at 478-272-3585, or stop by and see our website at DublinWynnNelson.com. My name is uh, Phil Patel. I am one of the part owners here and the general manager here at the Hampton Inn & Suites. First time when I got introduced to Morris Bank, the people were so friendly and helpful. You feel like that you are appreciated there. At Morris Bank, everybody down at the bank is so friendly 
and not just to myself. They're just friendly to everybody. They want us to succeed because our success is their success at the same time. That makes a lot of difference and they're always there for us. Progressive Rural Telephone Co-op offers a full range of communication products and services to its members in Lawrence County and surrounding areas. We take pride in being your total communications provider, and we work hard to provide quality services at the best prices. In addition to offering phone service, we provide high-speed internet and digital high-def TV. And we always strive to put our members first. Progressive Rural, your total communications company. Small enough to know you, large enough to serve you. ProgressiveTel.com. Call 478-984-4201 or stop by 890 Simpson Avenue in Rents. Progressive Rule Telephone Co-op. All right, back with you. Well, Coach, man, uh, you know, you, you, you do draw out good competition. Bleckley with an outstanding program. They keep bringing in good coaches. They keep growing. I mean, they, they got a, a good program over there. The entire community is gelled around that one school. Mm -hmm. Same thing in Dodge. Dodge right. got a heck of a coach, don't they? Oh, yeah. Coach Harden's a great coach. Uh, you know, I coached with Coach Harden here for a year. I've known him for a long time. He does an excellent job over there. And it, it, it's, it's great to see that community finally give him that opportunity that he deserves, you know to be the head football coach there. And, and he's certainly uh, gonna get the most out of his kids. And, and, and they've always had athletes there. You know, Dodge has always been a good football program. And I, and I think that he's a guy that can really help them go to that next level. Um, you know, and, and it was a tough football game Friday. I thought for the first half, we really dominated and played really, really well. Uh, took a 20 to nothing lead at halftime. Uh, and then came out the second half and, and they scored in that first series and then they got a little momentum. Uh, you know, we weren't able to move the ball. We started uh, not executing up front. You know, when you watch our film, it's all about execution. The things we did right in the first half, we didn't do in the second half. You know, there was, uh, you know, no, nothing, nothing different happened on the other side. They came out and dodged and, and did the same thing they did. They just started executing better. And, uh, and we didn't execute, and ultimately that comes down to who, who scores the most at the end, and, you know, and it was them. You know, we had a chance from the 20-yard line late to try and punch it in and get a tying score, and we weren't able to execute whereas they were. So, you know, what do you do? You tip your hat to them, you say, good job, and then you try and fix our mistakes and move on. And that's all you can do. It is a tough football game against a good team, a good program. And I hate that we came out on the losing end, but, I mean, that happens sometimes. And now uh, we've got to push and fight and work hard and do whatever we got to do as coaches and players to get ready for that region schedule that's coming up. We got one more chance uh, to, to get uh, to, to improve ourselves before the region starts. And then unfortunately, because of cancellations and stuff, we're going to be down a game going into region. You know, uh, Brad Winstitut has called and canceled for this Friday, so that's going to be a forfeit win for us. Uh, obviously, that's not what you want. You want to play, um, but you can't do that. You can't find games. You know, it's, it's just the way it is this time of year. Um, so we're only going to get three non-region opportunities to get ready for the region, and that's tough. Uh, but I think our kids are resilient. They're going to work hard, and they're going to get it done. We well, had a week off prior, and you worked on some things. I, I'm sure you worked on some basics that weren't getting done, right? Yeah, fundamentals. That's what you got to do. I mean, you got to improve your fundamentals. You got to make sure. That, I mean, football comes down to blocking and tackling. If you block and you tackle, you're going to have a chance to win. If you can't block and tackle, we're going to have issues. In the second half, we didn't block very well up front, and we didn't tackle very well at times. Mm -hmm. uh, and so those are things that we, we've got to fix. And if we can get those fixed, we're going to, we're going to be fine. And we can get our guys back, we're going to be fine. I am proud of the young guys uh, that had to step in and play. We had several JV guys that had to step in and play the whole game Friday simply because we had so many guys that were out with quarantine or injury coming back off all that. Um, so I'm proud of those guys. You know, a couple of really, really guys really stood out and and and, uh, and, and, and filled in and, and played hard. And, and obviously, we're overmatched at times because of their youth or whatnot. But they, they played hard and then they got a great experience. And I think that's just going to help us, you know, depth-wise going forward. Yeah, yeah. You had uh, what uh, Snell was out. Yeah, Caden right Caden Snell was out at outside linebacker, and you know he's an All-State kid, one of the leaders on our team. And uh, that hurts us big time. But you know, uh, we had a 10th grader, Quinn Clark, stepped in and did a really good job. Played. Uh, play tough, you know. It, it not, you know, it's tough when you're playing that four quarters for the first time. It's different when you're <laughs> rotating in and out. Um, but, but I, I thought he, he, you know, he did some really good things. And he's just a tenth grader. You know, he's a kid that's got a lot of potential. So we're excited about him. Uh, you know, our free safety was out uh, with injury, uh, and so we had uh, another uh, young a JV kid step in. Russell Graham stepped in, played the whole game of free safety. Did some good things in the first half. Did some not so good things, like all of us in the second half. So you know, it, but it was a great learning experience, a great way to grow. Uh, you know, we had several offensive linemen that were out with quarantine that just got back into practice this week. 
uh, you know, so we had to get those guys acclimated and put pads on and ready to go. And uh, so they didn't get a lot of practice time and they got thrown in the fire. And then, you know, it, it kind of showed up in the second half a little bit. Um, but that's the guys we got. Those are the guys that we're going to live and die with. Those are our players and we yeah. believe in them. Yeah. And, uh, and it is what it is, you know. Yeah. And trying to be in shape and be in quarantine, not being able to practice, it's just difficult. Well, it's yeah. impossible. You can't do it. If, you know, if a kid's got to go home for 10 days, that's 10 days where you're just counting on him to go outside and run, to do something. You know, I, we can't be there with you. We can't bring you in. Uh, you know, it's on your own. And, and that's just, you know, how kids are. Just, it is what it is. I mean, yeah. they come back and then they're not ready. You, you can tell when a kid hasn't practiced. I don't, you know, I don't care what – some people got this ridiculous idea that – uh, you know, you don't have to practice hard. You can just show up and play, you know. And, and I, I don't believe in that. I think that's foolish, and I'm never going to believe in that. And if a kid practices hard and works hard at practice and shows out of practice, then he's ready for Friday nights, right. you know. Right. A kid that don't do it at practice is not going to get an opportunity on Friday night. Friday night is not a rehearsal. It's not an audition. Friday night's the show. Right. Uh, Monday through Thursday is the audition and the rehearsals. And you do well in those, and you get to be in the show, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I, we've, I've always done things that way, and I'm not changing that, you know. And then I think we got some kids that, that most of our kids Monday through Thursday are going to get after it, and they're going to get their chance on Friday to help this team in some way, mm -hmm. in some role, in some capacity. And, uh, and I think we got a good group of guys that, that really put in the work. And, and, and you know, I think success is going to come. Yeah, Coach, you got your 11 or 14, 15 kids, you know, that you know are going to be there, going to start. And then you got your scout team. And you got the kids over there who are working hard, who are putting it in every play, who are competitors. And that's the ones that you nurture up, I've seen, Coach. And you're going to find them a place on special teams. or right. gonna, As long as they'll execute, as long as they'll do their job, yeah. you're going to find somewhere to put them. Yeah, if they can show us Monday through Thursday that they're physical, that they'll hustle and they'll work hard, we're, we're going to find some way they can help the team. You know, a lot of our special teams guys uh, are guys that are maybe backups, you know, uh, maybe not starters on offense or defense, but they're getting out there and they're getting a chance to be on the grass and, and get some reps and help this football team and show us what they can do, you know, because they've earned that right in practice. And, uh, and, and we love it when those guys do that. I hate that they hadn't been able to play a JV game yet uh, because we keep get, everybody keeps canceling because of the COVID stuff. Uh, but the, hopefully they, they, we do have our first JV game scheduled for this Thursday, so hopefully they can get out there and, and, and finally run around and play a little bit, you know. Uh, especially those freshmen. I think they deserve a chance to get out there and run around and see what they can do in that JV game. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, it's hard to, to practice and really get better. you got to see that competition. you got to beat up somebody besides yourself. Right, yeah, no doubt. Um, and that's the hardest thing about the quarantine stuff is you get so many guys in quarantine, now you can't put together a scout team, yeah. you know, because those guys are now your ones. And so it's, <laughs> it's, it's, tough to, it's tough to do it, man, but it is what it is. And, again, I know we're all dealing with it. I'm not trying to sing the blues. We're all struggling with that right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, some of us just get hit harder than others. That's the way COVID is. I mean, we don't know who's going to get hit, how they're going to get hit, yeah. how many people are going to be out. And, you know, everybody's got different quarantine practices. Mm -hmm. You know, some schools quarantine everybody, contact trace everybody. Some right. only send home the sick kids. So it's just a different thing. Um, but but you got to play the cards you're dealt. You know, you got to, you know, you got to do what you got to do with what you got to try and, and be as successful as possible. So what about uh, middle school, Coach? Have they played any games? Yeah, they played a few games. I'll tell you what, our middle school staff is doing a really great job down there. They're really working hard. There's been a vast improvement from last year to this year in just the amount of work they put in and, and, and the way those kids are showing up on the field. We're really, really proud of that. I think those guys are, are really getting after it down there. I think we've got a good staff in place down there. And I think we've got a recipe to build up and be successful. You know, It took a while when I first got here for us to get things in place where we were successful every year. I mean, we've made the playoffs seven in the last eight years, I think. Uh, so, you know, we, we are, we, we've been a successful football program. Um, and I think we've got things in place to continue that trend of being a, a year-in, year-out playoff team. Uh, you know, as I've said many times, when I first got here, we never made the playoffs. West Lawrence had only made it once in like 20 years, yeah. you know, when I got here. Made the playoffs. Now, yeah. we're not talking about... We're just talking just getting in. Run. Just getting into the playoffs is right. what we're talking about. First round. Right, and now we've got a point where we're in every year. So I think that's progress, man. And, and I think that uh, it's not where we want to be. We're not satisfied with that, but we've got to continue to build, continue to put in to this athletic program and to the end of these players and to get them to get to that next level. Yeah, of course you're not satisfied, Coach. You've proven that. You and your staff have proven that over time, and, and that's why seven out of eight years you made it into the playoffs. But to build that, have that long-range plan. So what you got, what you got to deal with, and you work with what you have at this level, but you got to grow it. That's why at middle school program, you've talked about it so many times before. Right. I was asking about are they getting to play because 
we, we know they got quality coaches down there. We know we know those kids have talent. You guys are big kids that are walking the halls that will never play unless you get them involved in middle right. school. Right. You got some at, real athletic kids who will just fall off and go another way. But if you get them involved in middle school, if they see how important that team is, mm -hmm. then they'll go forward and, and they're going to help us in the future. Yep. So long-range playing coach, I mean, you are proven that's, that's where you're headed. That's what we're hoping for. And it's, it's tougher now because, you know, we live in the age of specialization where we're where for some reason uh, parents think that hey the only way to be good at something is to do one thing and one thing only year round which makes no sense every scientific study out there proves that's ridiculous every college coach will tell you that's ridiculous uh, but we've got people that have bought into that and so you got to convince them hey I mean I want my football guys to play I want them to wrestle in the fall I want them to play basketball in the winter I want them to play baseball and run track in the spring I want them doing that I want them developing those skills and those relationships and those abilities that come from playing multiple sports and then I think that every sport should be that way and I think if you're specializing in just one thing that, that's not how you that's not athletic that's not being athletic you know well, that's a recipe for disaster but you got to get them young you got to get them involved in a lot of things and then you got to get them out there and and, and really uh, give them the opportunity to develop as an athlete as an overall athlete not just a specialized right. athlete yeah for sure coach uh, you you develop that strength that total body uh and and another sport helps you in the other sport but it, you know if you have an excellent kid who's you know got speed or or can can shoot basketball real well or a uh, good soccer player, whatever the case may be, uh, that, that'll develop on them. And they, they'll find their way in life, for sure they will. But uh, to be a part of a good team sport and, and to plug in and be that group, there's, there's a real brotherhood in football, Coach. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, football's tough. It's not an easy sport. You're outside in the hottest time of the year, sweating, working. Uh, we, we have 25 workouts and practices in the summer. Yeah. When they're not even in school, they got to be here 25 days in the summer. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we, we ask them to do a lot of things. You're, it's physical, it's tiring, it wears on you. Uh, you're not in an air-conditioned gym or in a room or any of that stuff. It's tough, you know. And, and, and kids nowadays, I hate to say it, have, have, you know, our society's allowed them to be a little bit softer. And, and, you know, I know I'd say some things that are probably politically incorrect. That's just me. I'm not a politician. I'm just going to say what I think is true. And, 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 and it really takes effort now to develop that mental toughness in kids. And you got, it used to be back in the day too, man, where if I wasn't, if I wasn't getting that playing time or I wasn't doing something, uh, you know, my, I remember my dad would push me and say, work harder, get better, do what right. you got to do. And then, you know, now we live in a society where it's always someone else's fault. It's never my fault. It's never any of this. And then, and, and, you know, I, one thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it till I get fired, and I may get fired. I'm going to do it till I get fired is I'm going to push kids and teach them that is not the way to live your life. Right. You know, you get what you put into it. Bottom line, if you want something, go after it. Work hard. Strive for it. Seek after it. Go get it. And don't make excuses when you fail. Learn from your failures and let's go on to the next thing. Yeah. You know? And coach, a kid that loves the grind. Yes. That's what you want. I, well, that's what I, I want a worker. I want a kid, to, you know, I, I think it's great. I, I love, uh, you know, there was a picture that was posted from, from, from Coach Saban in Alabama where one of his most talented guys, it was, they took a picture of him sitting on the, on the sideline with Coach Saban because he wasn't working at practice, wasn't doing what he was supposed to do, and he got benched. You know, there was the next man up. And in the, I think the most amazing thing about it was is the, the picture uh, was posted by the kid's father who said, I appreciate you, Coach Saban. My son gets it. You know, and because of that, I think that kid is going to work harder, get back, and he'll be back on the field, you know. I wish we had more people that way that, that took that mentality. That, hey, you know what? If you're not working hard to do what you're supposed to do, you don't deserve to be out there. You need to earn it. And, and I think if we did that and kids took that mentality to all sports, uh, you know, you would see an improvement, uh, you know, across the board. And I don't want them just doing it in football. I want our basketball kids doing that. I want our baseball kids doing that. I want all of our kids taking that mentality. It's a grind. It's work. It's tough. But you're going to get out of it what you put in. And if you don't put in, you're not going to get anything out. Yeah, great. We'll take a short break and be right back. Just stay with us. Imagine a life-changing injury. Imagine the fear and unknown. The Houston Clinic Sports Medicine Team, the only physicians in the area with advanced certification in orthopedic sports medicine, treat sports injuries with innovative techniques. The Houston Clinic has helped nearly a million athletes live without pain. Imagine getting back in the game. Imagine the best game of your life. The Houston Clinic Sports Medicine Team. You've got miles and miles of grass to mow. So you're going to need a machine built to perform day in and day out. 
season after season. You're going to need a Gravely built to mow the distance. Find your new Gravely mower at Myers Equipment and Supply, 301 North Jefferson in Dublin. Since 1999, Stepping Stone has been working to keep you and our community safe. Our mission is to lessen the trauma suffered by individuals who have been abused or assaulted. We provide evaluation in a safe, caring environment to encourage collaboration of services for the benefit of the victim and their non-offending family members. We strive to increase the protections of victims and hold offenders accountable. Here at Stepping Stone, you are never alone. If you or someone you know has been a victim of child abuse or sexual assault, please know we are here for help and comfort. We offer a variety of resources to help meet your needs and get you out of difficult situations. If you are in immediate danger, please call 911 or call our fully confidential crisis number at 478-595-8339. You can also reach us at our office at 478-275-9010. Coach, and uh, kind of wrapping up the show today, uh, I, I want to just talk for a minute about, you know, your injuries and who's going to be out, who's coming back. Uh, you know, I'll tell you what, it's day to day. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, we got some guys. I'm hoping Caden Snell will be back by region play. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, you know, I know our starting quarterback is out for the season. So, so our, you know, our backup is going to be our new starter. And, and, and I have complete confidence in him. Jace Thompson, he's, he's, he's ready. He's going to do a good job for us. Uh, so I think we're going to be fine there. That's definitely not going to be an excuse for us. Um, you know, we've got some uh, our, our free safety. Uh, Joel Howard is out with an injury. I'm hoping he'll be back for the veterans game. I don't know. You know, uh, you know, we got a couple other kids that uh, that we have out of precautionary measures. I put them in the concussion protocol just to be safe because they took some shots and. And, uh, you know, if you take a hit and then you get any kind of headache or anything, uh, you know, we definitely want to pull them out of all contact and put them into that protocol. Yeah. So they'll be back when they're cleared. I don't know when that'll be, but when they're ready and when they're cleared, they'll be back and not before then. Uh, so, you know, we, we've got some guys that we got some moving parts right now. But again, that's not an excuse. That's just a reality. And, uh, and we're going to put a team out there that's going to play hard and fight just like we did last week, no matter who's on the field. And uh, sometimes things are going to go our way and sometimes they aren't. Uh, but, but either way, we're going to get better. And if we can get better every week, then, then I'm happy with it. You've got talent on the field, Coach, no doubt about it. You've got a quarterback who has athletic ability, who, who can lead the team forward. You, again, have good running backs in the backfield. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you probably need to execute a little bit better on the line. Yeah, definitely. A little bit better blocking, you know that. And defensively, we need to execute a little better defensively. You know, we didn't do as good a job in that second half. The first half, we executed great defensively. The second half, they did the same stuff they did in the first half. We just stopped making plays. It wasn't any different, you know. Um, and, and sometimes that happens, and, and, and we've got to have somebody step up and be a leader and put the team on his back and say, hey, when we need a play, I'm going to make it, yeah. rather than looking for someone else to make a play. Right. Right. And when we can get that, I think we're going to be all right. Yeah, and, and Coach, we go back to that. I, I've said it before, and, I, you know, you could harp on and harp on it. You can't take plays off. Kids that take plays off, that they get you beat. Yeah, no doubt. And I think it goes back to that mentality in our society of always trying to find the easiest way. Let me take the easy way out because, you know, if something's too hard, I don't really want to do that. I want to do the easy way. And if we would push our kids to do the difficult things more, you develop that kind of mentality. And that's what we're going to do on the football team no matter what. I don't, I don't care if i got 25 kids out there because it's too tough. And that's what we're going to do. I mean, I'd rather have, you know, 25, 30 kids that are, that are, that are grinders that are workers then have a hundred on the roster just to look cute and say we got a hundred in the program I mean what does that mean uh, you know I, I want guys are going to work and I want to make it difficult so it's going to weed out those guys that aren't aren't willing to get out there and work and really develop those guys that are yeah. uh, coach uh, right now what do you need from the community what is the community oh, I tell you, we get great support from our community you know I mean they they show up on Friday nights you know good bad or ugly and they're vocal and they're loud and I love it you know yeah. Uh, you know, I don't worry about, I want our community to be supportive. I want them to be out there and to be vocal and to be excited. It shows they care about the football program. That's what we want. Um, you know, and so, I, you know, I, I love what we get from our community. I have no complaints there. I think 99% of the of Raider Nation is behind us and wants us to win and wants us to be successful. Uh, but just like anything, I mean, usually it's that majority, uh, the minority of, of discontented people that are always the loudest in anything. But I think I, I've really heard a lot of that from our community. Uh, I've been some places where it's that way, where, you know, uh, that 5% screams louder than the 95 and it's always negative. Uh, but here, man, they, they, they're, they've always had, we've always had great support. You know, I, I think Raider Nation's a great 
uh, community. I think we got great supporters that really bleed red or blue, and uh, and, and you know, I, and I love it. I think it's great. So I, I'm completely content with with what we get on Friday nights playing at home. It's a great atmosphere, and and I just hope we can keep it up. Coach, you going forward, and it's been this way in the past. You pointed it out. You get great support from the administration, don't you? Yeah, they do a great job. We we, we do have an administration from the superintendent, Mr. Garanto, all the way down to our principal, uh, Dr. Kemp. That, uh, that, that really uh, support athletics, that want athletics to be successful, that give us what we need when we need it, and, uh, and we appreciate that. Yeah, well, Coach, uh, best of luck over this next week and working off week, and, and in the coming week, we'll come back and check in with you uh, next week. Until then, go Raiders. Badcock Home Furniture and More is your home store where you'll find great savings on new living room sets, sofas, love seats, recliners, and more. Badcock Home Furniture and More has great savings every day on bedding and bedroom sets. Shop Badcock Home Furniture and More for a great selection of dining room sets and save every day on electronics and appliances at Badcock Home Furniture and More, 1927 Highway 441 South in Dublin. Call 275-3144 for more information or stop by and see Wendy and Tim Sumner or any of their friendly staff today at Badcock and More Home Furniture Store, where no credit is ever refused.